Hi, you guys. Uh, welcome to Project Fev. I'm Sharon, Intuitive Empath, and I'm coming to you today to talk about a few things in the essence of tarot and tarot readings, particularly when it's being guided by an uh, intuitive empath like myself, um, how to kind of deconstruct a tarot reading and then probably put finite little details on the terminology that you'll hear thrown around in a lot of readings, not just by myself, but by other tarot readers and interpreters and um, people who channel messages from the divine through their guides, utilizing tarot or other cards as such. Um, so I wanted to kind of start out with, and I titled the whole you know series here of, does this resonate with me? Okay, because it's important to understand if it does, does it resonate with you, in fact, and what is it, what does it mean to resonate with you? Because a lot of people that I've seen um, leave comments or messages or to the, to the readers on not just YouTube, but sometimes the feedback that I even get from my own personal readings that I do with individuals is, yeah, that's going on, yeah, that is happening, yes, this, that, the other thing. They can confirm that the content body of the message is happening and they believe that that's what resonates with them that's not actually what resonating is okay so let's go in a little bit deeper um, into what is what is it to have something resonate with you so resonance in in itself um, by definition is to produce or be filled with a deep full reverberating sound okay so it's an actual experience that can physically be felt resonating okay so when a message resonates with you you're going to actually be physically touched by the message so when you hear the words or there's a part of the tarot reading or the message that comes channeled through the, the messenger and the divine the interpreter um you'll hear it and you'll either you'll have some type of physical reaction because it will actually change in almost an instantaneous your um, resonance vibrational frequency. Um, I thought I turned off. Um... Okay, we're just going to push through. So it creates a physical experience or physical, physical response. It's felt physically in the physical 3D world. And then after hearing it, it creates a ripple effect, okay? In your thoughts, in your emotional self, um, and then creates changes in your life or the initiation of change in your life that leads to transformation, okay? Vital, vital, vital difference between the message you want to hear and the message you need to hear. The message you want to hear actually tends to encourage the ego. And it makes people feel like, yeah, the decision that I made was the right decision. Um, that's not actually what it, it is. It, it doesn't actually mean that. I'm sorry. I'm just going to turn this off for a second. Hold on. I really need to do that before the videos. I need to pay more attention to that. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, it creates a ripple effect. So when you're listening to a tarot reader um, channel the message from the divine, and all you're doing is nodding your head, but there's no physical sensation, there's no... Um, I guess there's no purge or, or any type of emotional experience or there's no type of thought process that's deep and more provocative. Um, you're just kind of agreeing with the reading. Then that isn't necessarily a reading that resonates with you or you're not ready to hear the advice from the universe. Okay, so this becomes the danger, and I will use the word danger, with people who um, successively watch tarot reading after tarot reading after tarot reading after tarot reading regarding the same relationship, the same circumstance, the same person, okay? 
it's okay to have multiple readers, particularly online. We have access to that type of thing and it's easy access, right? We can just click and watch videos in our spare time. But um, over watching tarot can desensitize you to the message that's coming through from the reader, okay? So it's pretty vital to know, and this is why I say vital, because the whole point of tarot and, and what we're doing at uh, channeling the divine and you know delivering messages from universal source and universal knowledge is to help those people who really need to hear the message. Okay, these are people who are really struggling, not the ones who have embodied their own decisions and, you know, they're just watching tarot for fun. And please, by all means, watch tarot for fun. I love to have subscribe, subscribers on my channel just, you know, enjoy the fact that there are, are videos um, to watch and some of it is entertaining. But for the spiritual guidance and for people who are really struggling, um, remember that we're creating that space for these people to heal, okay? And that's that's genuinely and authentically the purpose behind what I'm doing on my tarot channel, which is why I call it Project Fev, which is frequency, energy, vibration. I really believe that everything in the universe comes down to that three multidimensional facet of experiences. Everything that you want to manifest comes down to um, vibrating, at the right frequency to create the right energy and consistently applying that energy to the situation until the manifestation takes place, okay? Um, and that is essentially what resonance is. So if you're listening to a message and it doesn't have any physical presence and it doesn't cause you to just kind of stop and go, oh, what is she really saying? Or pause, rewind, what was that again? Or wait, 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 shh, 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 I really need to hear this. If you're not really like focusing and honing in on the message and, you know, it does, and you can pause and, you know, turn the message off, then it's really not resonating with you, okay? So being in agreement with the message is also important, but not the same as resonance. And here's why um, confirming the content body of the tarot reading is vital, um, because what the what the universal knowledge is doing is channeling through the reader um, the circumstance, okay? So that you know that I'm channeling the message that's meant for you because this is the circumstance or this is the event or these are the emotions that you're experiencing as a result of that. So it's a confirmation that this message and the content of the message after the confirmation or the content body of the reading is for you. And the part that you really need to perk up and listen to is, is actually the message, the channeled message from the divine, not the content body as much, okay? So the content body will cause you to ask questions or you should be asking questions during the content body of the tarot message. Is this happening to me? Do I see myself in this situation? Is this happening in my life? Uh, does this describe the circumstance or event? Uh, is this the way that I'm feeling? Or does it describe what I'm experiencing? So if those kinds of questions are coming into your mind and you're answering yes, 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 then the channeled message that comes afterwards is something you should probably listen to very closely um, and hopefully it will be what resonates with you, okay? So the purpose of that part of the reading is to create, um, to create the atmosphere and space to trust the message that's channeling through. And it's like, yes, I'm going through that. Yes, that's what it's making me feel. Um, yes, that does describe the circumstance. No, it's not too vague. As a matter of fact, it actually pretty much is you know, descriptive to what's happening to me. Um, it is a water sign that I'm interacting with. Then I'm going to listen to the message in the cards and see what it has to say as far as advice from the universe, okay? Um, and typically, uh, people who seek terror or seek the more specific readings or personal readings are the ones that are just struggling to hear their own voice among their, amongst their anxiety, their emotional intensity, um, all of the, you know, rolling thoughts and, and, you know, overthinking. So if you're having a difficult time channeling into your own intuition, 
that's what I'm here for. It's, it's like, okay, you're having a difficult time figuring out which way to go or clarifying what's happening. That, that is significant to recognize. So that is a significant amount of awareness to recognize you're having a difficult time listening to your inner self. Great. It's wonderful that you can acknowledge that. I have trouble doing that too. Just because I'm an intuitive empath doesn't mean that I've got all of my emotional self figured out. Sometimes the intensity of the energies that are swirling around in my life leave me dumbfounded. And I'm reaching out to my gurus going, what the heck is going on here? Because I cannot literally figure this out. Okay, particularly with the intense emotions um, that come from interactions either at work or in relationships in general, because I mean, it just kind of short circuits my emotional self. I can't really process through things. I tend to overthink and, you know, consider all of the what ifs, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and then try to have contingency plan after contingency plan just in case, right? And that sounds a lot like anxiety and worry. So yes, even tarot readers, we are ascending and working through our own issues or purging or releasing. So don't think that you see me on here and I'm perfect in any way, shape or form. No, there, there's definitely a lot of grateful humility in me from the divine, from the universe. And trust me, I did not necessarily feel inside of myself to step out onto YouTube and do this. This is the first video that I posted felt so foreign to me and I have felt like I've wanted to do it or I felt led to do it. But you know, I, I have, I've put this off. I've been in, you know, the belly of the will, just putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And it's kind of like, you know, crap or get off the pot. You really need to, you know, put up or shut up about how uncomfortable you are in your life. And you're not, you know, manifesting your own abundance by stepping out in the gift and the calling and the path. And, you know, how can I preach if I'm not practicing? So, okay, divine message heard. Thank you very much. This is what we're doing now. So this is what we're doing now. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So even for myself, I have to think about these things. And this is kind of my process, too, when I'm listening to tarot readings to try to determine what resonates with me and what I've made observationally or what I've noticed observationally that, you know, I do have a physical response to the initial body content. I do ask questions like, does this, you know, sound like my circumstance? Does it elicit the same emotional response as the event? Okay, then this probably is for me. I should probably listen in. Tune in Tokyo. Okay. So, um, it, Okay, so it, it develops that space for the trust, the trust in the message, the trust in the affirmations, the trust that if you carry the advice out in your life and make the decision to um, kind of infuse the advice from the, from the reading into your um, thought process, emotional process, daily process, whatever it is, then you'll reap the benefits of whatever, you know, the cards are basically... Um, channeling from the divine message, right? Okay. Um, and it's valuable and can help you manifest the best outcome by providing clarity, especially clarity, because, you know, um, I, I think a lot of times it's great to hear that, yes, this is happening and it's wonderful to have somebody else talk about it or recognize it or validate it for you. But I think the best part of being an empath and, in and in being able to utilize the tarot is that I can, I can go to specific decks and go, okay, this is exactly where the blockage is at. This is exactly what you should do in your meditative stance, in your spiritual life, in your prayer life, that, that devotional time that you, you spend for either yourself or connecting with the divine in whatever facet or demographic that may be. It doesn't matter, matter re religious affiliation. Um, God is God, and it doesn't matter, you know, how that m message is channeled or, or what happens um, as a result of, you know, what you devote yourself to or how that devotion expresses itself, okay? What matters is your individual personal relationship is so unique that I couldn't ever know the, the totality of all the past circumstances that have created the you that is right now or... 
um, even begin to speak into every single circumstance that has built you into the person I see or am reading for today. Um, so because I couldn't ever know all of that, a channel message from the divine needs to confirm for you that the message that I'm speaking to you is in fact from the divine, right? You need to know that it's coming from a source other than me. And it's not just psychic abilities to see into the past or into the future, but it literally is channeling a universal energy and a universal source and driving that message down here into the practical 3D reality. Okay, and, and you can literally be affected by this. So it may include, but certainly isn't limited to how the other person is feeling. Because let's just face it, you're only one part of that scenario, right? There's no way that you could see into every possibility or every aspect, which is what creates the worry and the anxiety, right? But the universe has a bird's eye view. And it's omnipresent, so it knows exactly. Universal knowledge and the, the divine knowledge knows exactly what's going on in this situation, and not just from you, but from the other party. So if that person's telling you one thing, but they're hiding their true feelings or hiding their true self, you may not know or pick up on that, but the divine knows, and it knows exactly what's going on there. So it's going to show itself in the cards, and it's going to say, hey, watch out here. You're dealing with a masked clown. You know, you're dealing with, with a little bit of the hangman, or you're dealing with the magician that's unhealthy and, you know, presenting itself with like the page of cups or the page of swords. Um, or the Knight of Swords, you know, and this person's using their words to cut through you in a manipulative way to try to cut you down like a narcissist would with gaslighting, that type of thing. Um, those, those messages read clear, loud and clear for me in the cards. So when those come through and those combinations for me, I know exactly who you're dealing with. I don't know who that person is or what your situation is, but the divine does. So, um, it you know can can literally reveal what's actually going on with the other person whether they tell you that or not and let's face it too it's i think it's important to note that sometimes people don't know themselves well enough to be honest with who they are and you may intuitively pick up on who they really are and they're telling you they're not that person because they don't identify as being that person yet they haven't been awakened to that about themselves sometimes when you hear things about yourself it, you haven't been awakened to that. So you go in denial or you get defensive or the ego pain body type thing plays out, right? You haven't identified as having that as an issue or defense mechanism or, you know, whatever it is. You haven't made the connection yet. So this happens with other people too. And that's why it's important to be accepting, forgiving, and allow the divine to intervene on all of our behalves in all the situations that we ever can find ourselves in. Okay. Um... And it can also illuminate what of your actions have affected the situation positively or negatively, whether or not you've behaved with integrity. Sometimes um, from preconditioning or the way that we define things in terms of what we believe our standards to be, we can actually cause someone else that is genuinely and authentically meaning well, we can cause them hurt because of a misunderstanding. And we're not able to communicate through that misunderstanding with a, a lack of compatibility in our value system to the other person. And sometimes that, that crosses cultural divides, okay? And sometimes it's just, you know, people from two different backgrounds or the male perspective, masculine perspective, or female, female perspective, uh, feminine perspective can be very different, you know, on, on two very, you know, um, what would seem opposite sides of each other and how do you get those in alignment well there can be messages that come through from the divine um, that can speak to that about the words behaviors actions things like that that affect situations like this okay so uh, tarot and you know getting a, a personal reading about situations that you're struggling through or struggling with can actually help you expand your own consciousness and become more aware of self, become more in tuned with your own intuition and actually heal, bring healing to situations uh, where you have blockages that you're not even aware of. I cannot tell you how many times I've done readings for people and the card comes out and it's clear as day and they're, they're stunned. That's resonating. Okay. They're stunned. They're physically affected, like, oh my God, I never saw that before, but it's true. 
I am in denial. And then it exposes all that denial and they start doing the work and applying the messages from the cards and their whole life changes. Ladies, I have seen women go from, you know, like they've been dating and dating and like just, uh, what do you call that? Serial dating, not able to find a partner and not understanding that they, the last guy, eight guys they've dated have been high quality men, but they're not seeing anything to be grateful about. So it channels through the cards. Boom. The message comes through and they're like stunned. Most times there's tears as it purges and it, as it releases. And then they do the work that's, that's, you know, set forth by the message in the cards. And man, their life changes. They love themselves. They're happier. They feel more fulfilled. And boom, in comes that man. And I, I mean, I can't tell you how happy I am that that kind of thing happens for people and that I'm somehow involved in that whole process. It's very rewarding and validating and fulfilling for me as part of my work. And I love to be a part of that for everyone. So um, I'm almost there with the personal readings. Um, I have a, a, a couple more details to work out, but as soon as those are, are there, definitely going to have personal readings available for you guys. Okay, so keep, keep uh, tuning in. We've got a lot of things to look forward to that's coming from Project Fev, okay? So let's go through very basically what um, the tarot card reading is. So I use the Gilded Tarot deck. Um, I believe it's Lou Allen. And the reason why I use this deck is because this deck as it actually resonates with me. The depictions on the cards help me channel the message specifically. And then because I read intuitively, sometimes the book meaning of the card is vague compared to how the cards are relating and connecting to each other. So for a read for me, um, a minor arcana card like the um, Ace of Swords, for example, um, represents... Um, what's happening in the situation or the event that your decisions, actions, behaviors, words, choices, whatever you want to call it, affect, okay? Um, or something you've already done is being shown in the cards with the minor arcana, okay? Um, that is presenting itself in the read to help clarify or help bring confirmation so that you can trust the message, okay? Um, so I wanna go through the elements here because you have the you have four elements in the minor arcana, okay? Let me just go through really quickly and pull what they are. Where's the cups? And we're not represented by the cups here. Um, here we go. So you have all of the minor arcana are pentacles, okay? And this is the element of earth. And the pentacles really represent the energies of the 3D world, okay? Um, it has, uh, it's, it, classically, it channels the messages of finances, career, um, the materialistic needs and desires on this earth and um, manifesting those. And all of the minor arcana, um, build from the ace, which is the initiation or the inspiration or the idea or the initial action taken all the way up to the 10. And then you have your court cards, which are the page, knight, queen, and king. And we'll get into those separately because they carry for me as a reader a little bit different energy. Okay, so when a pentacles comes up in your reading, anything ace through 10 is going to be the initiation energy all the way up to the 10, which is mastery. Uh, completion or it may represent um, an overwhelming burden okay so it can represent some of those energies as it gets to the energy of the 10 or the power of the 10 from the ace to the 10 okay and it channels everything in between and then you have the wands this is the element of fire this is usually depicting action um, that has been taken action that needs to be taken it represents um, creative ideas or endeavors um, the creativity, the creative aspects of our human nature and how that expresses itself. Okay. So this is like the verb. Okay. So the pentacles is like the noun. This is like the verb. Okay. And then you have the swords. This represents, or the element that represents sword is air. Okay. So this is also going to be ace through 10. Um, it usually depicts thoughts, um, ideas, 
intellect, uh, intelligence, um, how your, um, what your thoughts are on a matter or what someone else's thoughts are of you. Um, and it's only in the mind, okay? Um, in combination with the, the wands, okay, we'll get into some combinations that I, I have in my readings, but in combination with the wands, the swords, air element, and the fire element, really is like it's like air on the fire it can cause a blaze so it intensifies the energy of the wands but also tends to um clarify the thoughts in the swords okay and we'll get into other combinations as we go through here and then the cups in the minor arcana represents your emotional self your internal self your internal processing um how you feel and the um Basically, the depth of that is determined by the ace to the ten. Okay, so then you have your court. Okay, so that's your, your page, your queen, um, your knight. I should have brought these out before, but... And king. Okay, so where's our knight? We're only missing our knight. Right? We have a queen, a king, a page and a knight. And for me, these court cards tend to represent um, in a reading a, a sense of mastery to some level. Okay, so here's a knight. Okay, so the page classically represents messages or young energy or um, immature or, um, you know, just kind of like it's always a young guy. He's still learning or he's got a lot to learn, okay? And then you have the knight. And sometimes this comes through in a reading as, whoop, I'm cutting the heck out of here. And it's about the action and energy of leaving. Or it's the action and energy of being the champion and wanting to master it or having the desire to master whatever the card element being represented. Like the pentacles would be some type of mastery in the 3D world, in the materialistic world. Um, and then you have the queen, um, which classically represents the feminine energy, the d divine feminine energy um, coming through in the reading, and then the king, okay? And classically, uh, the king and queen, when they come out in readings as partnerships, things like that, okay? So that's just an uh, overall view of that, how it comes out in a reading for me. So when I have a queen come out um, for a feminine energy in a read, it usually means that you've learned this to the extent of mastery. You are now the master of initiating projects and finishing projects and putting your action and energy into this situation. You've mastered it, okay? When it comes out as the king um, in a masculine reading, for God's sakes, where is he? Here. Um, king, it represents mastery for the masculine energy. When I'm doing a reading for a male and both cards come out and it's not a relationship, it's about him balancing his feminine and, and masculine energies and, and vice versa for a female reading or uh, that feminine energy reading. Okay, so when those cards come out in combination with each other, um, court cards really represent a, a degree of mastery from early stages of mastery all the way to, you know, trump card. Okay. You on top. Doop, doop, doop. Gucci me up there up top. Okay. And then we have the major arcana. Okay. So the major arcana for me, when I do an intuitive read, this really represents the divine. These are the, the um, source energy. These are the cards that represent influences by the divine from the collective um, you cannot control these and any decisions you make will not change these. These are the influences that are playing a part in the reader and the circumstance that have nothing to do with you. However, you can take the energy from these cards, be intelligent and understand that they're there, accept that they are and use them to your benefit, use them to your advantage, use them over an opponent to, to, to gain favor Okay, and the cards really illuminate from the you from you know how these present themselves and express themselves through the reading, and I can guide through that the interpretation on the cards and in combinations, of course. Um, like if this combination came out for you, damn, let me just tell you right there 
we're talking about a significant relationship. And you know that it is a twin flame of the divine, feminine, masculine energies. Um, spirituality is included here. Okay, so this is a, a meant to be relationship, okay? If this is happening in your chart in a love read, meant to be marriage, okay? Or a bond that's so incredibly strong, it's nigh unbreakable. And you guys both have a, like a like an etheric connection with each other. You can talk to each other psychically. That, bam, powerful energy in a reading, okay? So that's why I love to utilize the tarot. That's the basic fundamentals of what that is for me when I'm doing reads. And of course, each card has its classic definition and the energy that it carries with it based on the element and the ace through the 10 with the court cards and then the major arcana, um, which I all just kind of explained. That's a little summary, but I also like to use other decks for clarification, direction, affirmations, and additional information from the divine. And one of those decks is the soul's journey. Okay, and it looks like this on the outside. Here's the box that it comes in. It comes with a little instructional book. Um, the reason why I like to use these cards or I felt led to this deck is because it depicts very clearly exactly what it is that you're struggling with. Okay, so if the cards are indicating that you need to release blockages, it says, okay, blaming other people is the reason why you're not happy. Very clear as day, okay? There's no misinterpretation of these cards. And even better than that is for your devotion time. It gives affirmations of what you can do. So these are your, your action cards, okay? I accept responsibility for my well-being. I, I hold myself accountable. I accept responsibility. No more blaming other people. And when you stop blaming other people and you start making active changes in your life to manifest the, the you know, manifest the, your desires, you, you're fulfilled. There's happiness, right? And part of that is I am aware that being happy means that I am on the right path. So I love it when these cards like come out and I get to use this deck too because it really just intensifies uh, and really you know, makes it a laser-like focus of exactly what you can do to help the situation. Because let's face it, nothing feels more vulnerable than feeling completely out of control and not knowing what to do to fix, help, or or assist the situation. So the, the message comes through the divine, like your part in this is very simple. Accept responsibility if you want to be happy. Very clear. Clear as day. So I love those cards for that reason. Thank you, James, James um, Prague or Prague, for um, this incredible deck. It really is. It really just, you know, with a focus on um, spiritual well, well being um, and how to apply that to the physical world to manifest all of those spiritual goals. Man, wow. Good job. Okay, so the other deck that I like to use for advice, clarification, and um, spiritual enlightenment is the Wild Offering Oracle deck. Okay, and this is a Tasha Silver. And I was drawn to this deck originally because um, <laughs> it depicts Ganesh. And it, Ganesh represents, it's the deity of the remover of obstacles. And in my own devotion time, I often um, chant the Ganesh, you know, remover of obstacles chant. Um, because I just feel like most of the times when something is going on in my life that I can't explain or can't work through, it's because there's something blocking the way, something blocking my vision, something blocking the flow of energy, something that I'm not letting go of, some reason I'm not letting go of it, okay? So, and what I love about these cards too is that it tells you overall, it says feelings at the top of the card, if you can see, or loneliness. It'll tell you this is what's the issue, okay? This is what is, is resonating and coming through as what's really happening. So the heart of the situation 
is that, you know, you're not feeling your feelings. You're not allowing your feelings to, to surface. Okay. And then it gives you a little devotional message and kind of clarifies even further what it means by saying feelings. And it says emotions want to be felt. You really can't surrender something until you deeply feel it, right? So if the card came up surrender and the message in the tarot is that really the action to take is to remove these blockages and the blockages, here's your strategy, okay? So these are strategy cards on how you can activate the flow of energy through whatever blockages you're experiencing that's keeping you from your abundance or keeping you from achieving your goal, Okay, and it literally does give you prayers. So if you have devotional time, you can recite these prayers because sometimes people struggle with the words like, how do I pray? What do I say? How do I ask the divine for what I want? How do I uh, elicit positive affirmations? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to speak to my feelings because I haven't felt them in so long. I don't even know how to process through my feelings and know what to say. It gives very clear advice and very clear words if you don't have them. Um, and it says, allow me, dear divine, to offer all emotions to you, feeling them fully so they no longer hold me captive. Very streamlined process. So you can write that down from the reading. Um, one of the strategies that I use for positive affirmation is I take a little Expo marker, those dry erase markers, and on my mirror in my bathroom, I write whatever this affirmation is. I do this for myself daily. This is part of my daily devotional, okay? And I, I'll put on there, allow me, dear divine, to offer all emotions to you. Or I'll literally say, divine, I offer all of my emotions to you and, and I surrender my emotions to you. Um, allow me to feel them fully, so they no longer hold me captive. And I'll, you know, and I'll speak that until it, it clears. And then I'll erase it and put another one up there when I'm dealing with something else as life shifts as I move through life and find something else that I need to, you know, illuminate or release or purge. Okay, so that's why I love these cards and like to use the deck. And I love it when, you know, spirit guides me to break out the, the Ganesh deck is what I call it sometimes. Um, and then the other deck that I like to use is Moonology Oracle Cards, okay? Um, I also believe in Vedic Astrology, Sidereal Astrology, or I believe that there's some accuracy to it. And I don't think that we fully understand the ancient wisdoms, um, or I don't anyway, I'll at least own that for myself, um, the ancient wisdoms that can be utilized from a deeper understanding of the cosmos, um, mathematically, spiritually, and, you know, anything else that comes along with all of that conceptually. But um, it's Yasmin Boland. Um, it's, it, what it does for me is it represents um, literal planetary placements or phases of the moon with astrological influences that are either holding you back and preventing you from going or, or, opening up and releasing and saying, okay, the blockage is not your fault. It's bigger than you. It's been from the divine all along. And this is about divine timing. And here's why. Here's exactly what's going on so that you can confirm for yourself that a personal issue reaches a resolution. You know, the full moon is in cancer and this is what's coming around for you. So if you're dealing with someone who's a cancer and there's a full moon coming around the corner and say the full moon, like for instance, the new moon was in Pisces or the full moon was in Pisces recently. Um, you, it's a water sign. So this is going to affect how you guys interact with each other. Emotions are going to be heightened. And as a result of that, you're going to feel everything because you've been, you know, reciting that as your mantra in your devotional time. Or um, you're allowing your emotions to be felt. And as a result, you, you reach a resolution, okay? Because you've been doing the work with each other or with yourself, okay? Or there's a message here to step out of your comfort zone, okay? And that's, that's what astrologically the universe is, is giving you the planetary placements to either, you know, help boost that, secure it, or, um, you know, keep things moving along or in the right direction, so, or keep going, you know, like you're not quite there yet. Keep going. Haven't gotten the release yet. 
okay? So that's another deck that I'll use to, to offer advice and clarification. And then uh, one of the final decks that I, I use, and there's a couple of other decks that I've been eyeballing lately, so um, I feel like as soon as I get the financial release to do that, I'll go ahead and invest in those decks. Um, so that's coming up the pike too. But the other deck that I like to use or that I ca I'm called to use is the Journey Within cards. Okay, and this is, um, a, a, I just say Swami because... And I should look up the um, correct pronunciation of the first name, Radanth or Radhanath, Radhanath, Radhanath Swami. And I like this deck because it's about the devotion to the divine. Okay, so how can you build your spiritual um, person, your spiritual self? And what advice does the divine have about what of your spiritual growth is still lacking that is overall affecting how you're interacting in the situation, the behaviors and decisions that you're making? And, you know, what you can deeply do on a spiritual level um, to focus on relationships, personal growth, um, or servant leadership. Okay, so... Um, It'll give specifically spiritual things from within, okay, about how to improve relationships. And this deck usually ends up being the most profound messages sometimes when it comes through for people. Um, it's touched so many people that I've done reads for. You know, this one says, compassion is the base, basis of ahims, ahisma, ahimsa, sorry, ahimsa. The principle of nonviolence and of the spirit of yoga. Advancement in yoga is connected to your compassion towards others and your recognition that the suffering of others is your own suffering and the happiness of others is your own happiness. Um, so it helps bring to light the concepts of spirituality that we may not have connected in our own life. And I've seen and have been party to in an amazing moments where just the clarity on these cards has helped someone awaken to a sense of their higher self in some way. And they realize how vital it is, how important it is to um, devote themselves to their own spiritual growth in order to improve the situation or in order to, to manifest their desires uh, in a situation as well. So that's an overall general synopsis of the reads that I do, uh, whether I do them online or I do personal readings for you guys. Those are the cards that I'm currently using. Of course, that could change and will change. I don't structure myself to any particular spread, no Celtic cross or no, you know, past, present, future, only because I like the message to channel through my intuition from the divine in the most free flowing way and give you guys the most accurate, uh, profound readings um, that hopefully will most resonate with you and provide you the options and opportunities to make the most efficient and effective changes. Um, so with that being said, let's close out the video here and thank you guys all for watching. I'm going to have more instructional videos just like this, talking about different spiritual concepts um, that you know resonate with me or lessons that I've learned and things that have come, uh, come about and sharing just with you guys openly about the concepts of spirituality that I've come to know. Okay, um, subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell, like this video, and you know, namaste you guys, have a good night.